So I also realized from a comment that you had made this morning that I'm also one of those scouts that goes out ahead um, in the sense that I've now been through the disintermediation of uh, the travel industry. I used to run marketing for Expedia in the US. And very much though so the financial services industry, of which Mint is very much an outside edge case of, of what disintermediation in the industry can look like. Um, and I'm also experiencing that in uh, my discipline, I'm a marketer by, by training. Um, and marketing is moving from being a, a practice of the august in the ivory tower with big ideas. You think about the world of Mad Men. Um, now to very much an online, analytic, free platform um, driven service that, that can be applied by amateurs, enthusiastic amateurs everywhere for the benefits of good products and good services, which is good news for the not for profit community. But marketing is now incredibly inexpensive. So um, let me, by introduction and explanation, why Mint.com is a platform. I'll, I'll just share with you a little bit of an example of what Mint.com is and try to hit what the lessons we learned on the way to doing our own platform uh, to the degree you guys are going down a path with disintermediation and an online platform uh, to improve secondary education. Um, there may be some things that, that we've learned and some of the bumps and bruises we've had along the way that, that could be useful to you. You can avoid some of the mistakes that we've made uh, and hopefully replicate some of the successes. Um, the situation you've described of the sorry state of the U.S. higher education market, very similar to the state of the U.S. personal finance marketplace, if such a thing exists. Um, I don't think anyone in the room is going to argue that personal finance management skills, knowledge, and education in this country is abysmal. Um, it's a, been a huge cost to individuals and our economy in the last couple of years that people don't understand the power of compound interest, uh, and they don't understand how to calculate how much of a mortgage they can actually afford. So there's no question that there's a societal impact here. And basically, parents and schools are not stepping up to provide this education. So it's been a learn-as-you-go process. It's been very much driven by the financial services institutions themselves, which means the tools and the information out there and the platforms out there are very much hamstrung to an individual financial institution. Good luck getting your Bank of America balances off of your Wells Fargo website, for example. Um, and high schools and colleges don't teach personal finance education in any meaningful way. It's starting this year, but at the current rate of adoption, my estimate it was it will take more than a decade uh, for uh, high school and college students to have any semblance of personal finance education. But that's OK. It's going to fall to the private sector to get that done. And Mint's a part of um, a process to build platforms and take a fresh approach to education that we hope is going to fix that. Um, and we learn by doing that the platform and the, the platform meaning the tool, the online service I'll show you in a second, and the platform meaning the platform for education were equally important. Now, that tool, because we're a company of about 35, mostly engineers, and so we want to write code first. And it became an after, after the fact that we began to realize that having the training out there on how to use the tool and to provide continuing motivation to use the tool to get your personal finances under control was uh, incredibly important for the audience that came to us for the tool, as well as important getting the word out to people that weren't necessarily looking for a tool to manage their finances but just had a specific question they wanted to get answered. So they go searching on Google for, how do I estimate how much of a mortgage I can afford? Or what do I do to get out of credit card debt? Uh, Mint.com having educational content out there was sort of the fly paper out on the internet that drew people in to not only get that question answered in a very unique way, and I'll show you perhaps maybe some of the content we've done as well. Um, but also to inform them that there is a free and easy, effortless, automatic tool now available to them to not only, once they have the, the answer, but then put it into action. So bringing thinking and action together, as was mentioned before. Okay, so, so Mint.com is a free online personal finance service or a platform, the advantage of which is it brings together all of your financial accounts in one place, really for the first time. The average American has between 10 and 11 financial accounts. 
And if you think that sounds like more than you have personally, bear in mind you've got at least three credit or debit cards in your wallet right now, don't you? How many checking accounts do you have? How many savings accounts? How many investment accounts, brokerage accounts, accounts directly with mutual fund companies? Um, and on and on and on. So we bring that financial picture together in one place. And I can't tell you the number of, of comments I'd have back to from users saying, I never knew my net worth until I logged on to Mint.com for the first time. The added bonus, it takes honestly between five and ten whole minutes to create this aha moment. Um, so the technology to bring all those various information threads together um, is something that uh, was uh, a big part of our um, uh, technology magic, but very much focused on put the work behind the scenes so that the user has to do very little. So you can see this, this account I've got set up here. I've got four cash accounts. I've got two credit card accounts. Uh, if I had student loans, they'd be in here. Luckily, I'm old enough that we've gotten past those. So in addition to downloading all that information for me automatically, Mint also does the work that all of us were told we needed to do by our parents. And I agree, having your father talk to you about uh, personal finance is about as exciting as having your father give you whatever instructions somebody was speaking about this morning. Um, so we take all the work out of uh, managing your expenses. So instead of what you're always told to do, collect all your receipts from everything you buy for a month or two months or three months, right? We all have this. And, and then total it up at the end of the month and figure out what you spent and then compare that to what you made. You know, there's no reason why computers in this platform can't do all of that for you. And so that's exactly what we tackled. And we import and categorize every transaction you have in every credit, debit, investment account, and the like. We tell you, on average, what you've spent in any category, gas, groceries, food, dining and give you the immediate tools to um, keep track of how you're spending versus income, how you're spending versus your budget, um, whether you're actually profitable as an individual or not profitable as an individual, um, and <laughs> which is actually a much more important question than can you balance a checkbook, which is what most of the research in the field does to assess financial literacy among people of this age group. Um, and uh, gives you, very importantly, uh, alerts when you are going beyond a budget that you've set for yourself or there's a large event of any nature um, in your accounts. Um, it's also the first platform that's uh, financial institution independent, which means one of the alerts we set up is when a bank charges you a fee. And in fact, we sent a message around a couple months ago to say, hey, we've totaled up all the fees that Wells Fargo charged you this year. How would you like to share that information with Wells Fargo? Here's the 1-800 phone number where you can contact and, and negotiate uh, for a lower fee if you're a good customer. So I'll, I'm uh, struggling a little bit with access here, so I'll just go back to the, the flat picture. But in general, that's an overview of, in the space of personal finance, what we've found um, a platform can do. And I will say the results, um, I can give you some encouragement, um, have been very um, positive. We launched this service in um, um, launched the service in September of 2007. Um, we uh, just sold it to Intuit for 170 million dollars in November, uh, which is why I have time to come to wonderful events like uh, like these now. And uh, at the time that we uh, actually, as of today, uh, the service has uh, two million members. So we went from a standing start in September 07 to 2 million members in two years with no advertising. Um, and my total cost of acquisition was about $1.10 per new member, um, going back to what I'd said about the, the inexpensive um, marketing um, that's available to you now. And I will say, by way of encouragement, that is the power of having a great platform solution to a huge real pain point that is suffered by millions of Americans, um, not to mention Canadians, Europeans, uh, the people in the Asian and African continents will get there, but not straight away. Um, and when you have a great platform and with the benefit of social media, getting the word out to get people to adopt that tool is really fairly straightforward. And the last thing I'll, I'll touch on just before I'm jumping into more informal um, conversation is, um, as I mentioned, we um, began thinking about the tool and uh, platform 
Um, but we very quickly began to think about education because we heard from people, we love the approach that you're taking to helping me manage my money, um, but I'm still having to read Smart Money, Money, Kiplinger's, one of the 10,000 personal finance books out there in the marketplace to try to educate myself as far as what to do next and what's most important for me to be doing moving forward. Um, and so what we did was take a slightly different approach to personal finance education. Um, and, and through a lot of trial and error, we made a number of mistakes along the way. And I can't say the point that we're at right now with our personal finance education is where I'd like it to be. Um, but we're on a path to get there. And uh, with topics like this, as you might imagine, um, we're, we're getting great play in the social media outlets. And that was a really important aspect of our business model. Our revenue model is lead generation, so I need to spend very little to acquire my customers. And uh, uh, blog posts of uh, sort of 500 to 700 words that are out daily, um, written to our core audience, which are 20-something Americans, um, that are very diggable, very viral, um, uh, and leveraging our Facebook and our Twitter um, environments um, has enabled us to, to bring in um, a couple thousand new users um, every week just through folks that found out about Mint.com through our content. Uh, we're regularly on the front page of Dig, and uh, that brings in a lot of free traffic to us. And we're doing all of this, you know, generating uh, on average about half a million uh, readers a month, uh, which when you think about it is actually equivalent to Smart Money and Money Magazine's subscriber base. We're doing this with one employee, Lee Sherman, um, and a little bit of oversight from me. Um, and a bunch of freelance writers uh, who are fantastic in their field. Um, in addition, some of the world's best infographic artists, and uh, we're starting to get into video as well. My one strong regret is that we never um, got the Spanish language version of the Mint blog launched, but I'm still hopeful that Lee's going to get that done. So I, I think the implications for the education content platform for you guys and thinking about it this morning um, you know, that short form content is a great way to advertise your school or your program, but it doesn't come entirely free. You do have to manage your social media presence on Facebook, on Twitter, on Dig. It doesn't happen organically. You've got to put some effort into it. But I'm happy to say, you know, we have more Twitter followers and I think triple the Facebook followers of Stanford and Harvard. I just looked them up. And that's ridiculous. That, that should not be the case. Um, so I encourage you, if you're in your institution, not actively using those social media channels that you do. Um, and then uh, open sourcing the content, and I think the Best Buy example of the videos um, produced is, is a better story than, than I could tell there, but terrific. And also, you know, be open to the new media. I, I know you know better than I the, the rubric about um, we retain, I don't know, 5% of what we read and 20% of um, what we see and 50% of what we're told individually or so. Um, and so our experiments in um, infographics and uh, uh, video, I think, have been very helpful in advancing um, a lot more people to get introduced to, uh, introduced to the, uh, the tool and the platform and get going working on their finances. Um, the results, I think, certainly indicate that 18-year-olds are completely able to manage their own personal finances. And uh, I, I would uh, editorially say I believe their educations as well, putting the right tools in their hands. 93% um, uh, of end users say they've been helped by the service. Um, about two-thirds of them have created a budget for the first time. Um, about half of them have made a change in their spending, uh, most uh, typically to reduce their uh, dining and drinking out of the home and doing more eating and drinking at home uh, to reduce costs there. And uh, when we go back and look at the debt metadata that our platform creates and, and plan for metadata as you put the platform together for the first time, that's a mistake we made that, that I wouldn't replicate, um, we're able to see the trend that our users began cutting spending really in December of 06 when the recession was declared, or when it started, about a year before it was actually declared. Um, and they didn't actually increase spending until the third quarter of this year. So um, as a whole, in the aggregate, they're demonstrating great responsibility, which is not what one would expect from, from basically the 18 to 22-year-olds managing their personal finances. But my point is, if we can do it in the space of the 
managing their money. I, I don't know why we couldn't do it in the space of managing their education. So.